It was the world's largest manufacturer of fiberglass sailboats, and they made some of the best racing boats ever, teamed up with legendary designers Sparkmans and Stevens. They made over 30 different models, and most of them are still sailing right now. You may be asking me, Tim, why haven't we talked about them yet? Well, for good reason. This week on Everything You Need to Know, we're talking about Columbia and Hughes. Before we get started, I apologize for being tired and sweaty. I got my first COVID shot and uh, it was Moderna. And the only side effect I've had is sheer exhaustion. I have slept for hours after the shot. I've just been so tired and wiped out and I've only been able to stay awake for a few hours at a time before I sleep for four more hours. So um, not entirely a bad thing, I'm enjoying the rest. Now the brochure for Moderna says this is normal. So I'm not too worried about it, but I haven't been able to get very much done. Also, it's 42 degrees today, and this lowly YouTuber does not have air conditioning. Now for my American friends, 42 is 108 Fahrenheit. Ugh. Okay, so why have we not talked about Columbia yet? With all the boats I've done on the Everything You Need to Know series, I've avoided this one, and there's a good reason for that because I have one. You know how we always say sailboat manufacturing in the 60s and 70s was sort of a boys club, uh, about 10 to 15 different names that basically every company was involved with, and that reigns true with Columbia. A guy called Dick, Richard Valdez, and his friend Maurice founded a company making fiberglass things like canoes and campers. They called it Glass Laminates. That was the company. and. They started actually making sailboats eventually. They founded this company in 1958 and went on to make sailboats and then called the company Columbia. And the Columbia boats were designed by none other, none other than Sparkman and Stevens, legendary designers in their own right. Columbia went on to become the world's largest fiberglass sailboat manufacturer with plants all over the world. Dick Valdez and his friend Maurice were on top of the sailboat world at the time, selling amazing amounts of boats, and then they sold their amazing company to Whitaker, but Dick Valdez stayed on as president at that point. Eventually, Columbia was sold again, and this is where it gets interesting to me. Lady K Sailing is brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to keep this channel improving. And I want to give a special shout out to Michael for the awesome one-time donation he made on LadyKSailing.com. It really goes a long way to help the channel. Thank you. So Columbia gets sold while it's at its peak doing great to a company from Canada called Hughes Boatworks. And this is actually important to me because I happen to have a Columbia slash Hughes boat that they made during the transition from right when that transition was happening. And that's sort of what this episode is about. There are two Hughes boats in my home club. They're exactly the same, except they're not exactly the same. Mine and the other one that wins every single PHRF race that my club participates in. And I don't just mean wins. He has exactly the same boat as mine, sort of, and he wins every one of our two hour-ish races by about 20 minutes, so he wins a lot. And also, my friend Robbie has a Hughes nearby. My boat, Lady K, is a Hughes 35, but if you look up the specs on like sailboat data or something like that, she isn't really a Hughes 35. The rig is different, the drive is different, even the keel is different, but if you look up the other boat in my club, which is also a Hughes 35, the rig is different from mine, and the drive is different from mine, and the keel is different from mine. If you look up the Columbia North Star 1500, which became the Hughes 35, you'll find that my boat, Lady Keg, shares a lot of similarities with that, but it's also different. Lady K is a Sparkman and Stevens design with a shoal draft, tall rig, and a sail drive. The other one in the club is a deep draft tall rig with a regular standard shaft drive. This is where the internet gets really weird, seriously, because you can't find specs on either boat that match either boat. And it is weird, and herein lies the problem for us sailors with older boats. 
the documentation is so scattered and hard to find that we never really know what's what with our particular boat. It's not like cars where their database is like rock auto with every single part number imaginable and books like Haynes on how to fix anything that could ever go wrong. So I could obviously talk about Hughes and Columbia until I'm blue in the face because I have one and we can all talk about our own boats for hours, but I won't. Instead, I wanna talk about us banding together as a sailing community to create a database for our boats and to do something meaningful to better the documentation that we do have, what models and options exist for the boats that we have, or existed rather, and how we can maintain that information going forward. I want us to be able to document what maintenance that we've done, what modifications that we've done to our hull, and our boats, and our interiors, and our engine. What changes have we made to individual boats? So when it's time to sell the boat, we have records of everything. I have an idea that I think will revolutionize the boat sales and maintenance market and give us a space to flaunt our boats while helping other owners of the same boat learn from us while we learn from them. What I need are a couple of savvy people that know how to code apps and websites to help me build my idea. If you wanna help and you're keen on boats and keeping up the, the legend and the documentation and the modifications and the maintenance and everything of boats, but you can also code and build websites and apps, please reach out to me. I'd really like some help with this idea and I think it can go a long way. If you wanna help and you don't know anything about computers and coding and all that stuff, reach out to me anyway because I'm gonna to have to pay these people to build this thing. But I think ultimately, at the end of the day, we need to build a database of what we have and where it's been and what we've done so that when it comes time to either sell our boats or brag about the documentation history of our boats, we have a place to do it. Let's build something amazing for the boating community together.